Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for this stop on Kids Can Press's Fall Reading Relay and thank you to Monica Arnaldo for virtually tossing me the baton. I'm Tanya Lloyd Kai and today I'm going to read you a few pages from This Is Your Brain on Stereotypes. So I'll read you first a page from the introduction. Our brains constantly sort and label the world around us. It begins when we're babies. Those four-legged barking things, those are dogs. The bouncy things are balls. Toys are different from food, and food is different from milk. We need these categories. Without them, we'd open our closets each morning and wonder which items of clothing go on our legs and which go on our arms. Wait a second. These aren't gloves. These are socks. <laughs> we'd stare into our desk drawers, trying to figure out which items write and which ones erase. But our brains don't only sort things. They sort people. And that's where life gets complicated. When we group people into a category and assume that they all share certain traits, that's called a stereotype. Some stereotypes seem to be based on facts. For example, picture a group of kids playing video games. Are you imagining boys? If so, you're not wrong. About 60% of regular gamers are male. But not all gamers are male and not all stereotypes are true. By relying on people categories in our brains, we can make false assumptions. We can even act unfairly towards certain people, all because we've jumped to bad conclusions. When a large majority of people, or even a whole society, holds the same unfair stereotypes, real people pay the price. And I'm gonna read you one more page from later in the book, mostly just because I think it's funny. It's called Nothing to See Here. When you meet someone, do you mention that you fart in your sleep? Or maybe you say, hello, nice to meet you. Sometimes when a sneeze catches me by surprise, snot flies out of my nose. No, you don't say that? You keep these facts hidden away and you focus on making a good impression. Depending on the person you're meeting, a potential friend, a new teacher, the town mayor, you might choose to reveal and hide different things. That's normal. That's one of the ways we humans try to fit in with those around us. Imagine your life as a theater. The people nearby are the audience. They see your stage where you present yourself to the world, but you also have a backstage where you do your thinking and keep your secrets. The difference between the stage and the backstage is what researchers call impression management. That term was coined by a Canadian born professor named Irving Goffman in the 1950s. Basically, it means we hide our flaws and present our best face to the world. We talk about fashion instead of sleep farts and sunshine instead of snot. Having both a stage and a backstage helps everyone get along. It certainly helps avoid embarrassing situations, but it also makes it more difficult for scientists to figure out how discrimination happens. Impression management was the reason American researchers in the 1960s and 70s found it so tricky to measure racism. By then, everyone knew that racism was wrong. So if they had biased thoughts, they hid them. But that didn't mean they treated everyone equally in real life. And decades later, we are still hiding our biased thoughts. So that is some of what I wrote about in This Is Your Brain on Stereotypes. It covers all different sorts of stereotypes, and I think it's pretty fun too. So I hope you enjoy reading it. Thank you for stopping on Kids Can Press's Fall Reading Relay. And I am now passing the baton to Lisa Deresti Bedek, except I'm not passing a baton. Lisa has written a book called In the Dark, all about the science of nighttime. So I am going to pass her the pillow. Take it away, Lisa.